The Central Region Umpire Advisory Committee is excited to present this video outlining the expectations and essential fundamentals of plate mechanics. This video will survey, illustrate, and explain the elements of proper plate mechanics using video examples from the 2018 postseason, including the 2018 Central Region Little League Tournament and both the Little League Baseball and Softball World Series tournaments. Each clip will feature a Central Region umpire to illustrate the fundamentals and expectations of umpires working the plate. The content of this video will be broken down into three learning modules. Module 1 will focus on pre-pitch and in-pitch mechanics. The second module will focus on post-pitch mechanics and proper signals. And then the third module will focus on movement from behind the plate. Effective plate umpires set the tone for the game and their crew through their appearance and demeanor. They make sure equipment fits properly. For example, the mask should be worn loosely so that it absorbs the impact of the ball, whereas the chest protector and shin guards should fit snug. The chest protector should cover the collarbone and the clavicle area all the way down to the sternum and breastbone. Shin guards should cover the kneecaps and ankles, and plate shoes should be worn to protect the toes and metatarsal of each foot. With all equipment worn under the uniform, your appearance should look similar to the umpire in this picture. Neat, clean, crisp, and professional. Finally, you should have an in-charge demeanor when you take the field. Notice the command and control the umpires in these clips exemplify when starting the game. This demeanor should also demonstrate approachability to effectively establish a working relationship with players, coaches, game management, and any other fellow official. Your job is to work hard, have fun, and facilitate the game's progress, and both your appearance and demeanor will help set you up for success when working the plate. In terms of positioning to see pitches, finding the slot is the primary building block in stance basics. As the diagram illustrates, the slot is the area between the batter and the catcher's inside shoulder. The slot provides an unobstructed view of the entire strike zone and is also the safest position for umpires to position to see pitches. In these video examples, Notice how aggressive the umpires are in getting their head and eyes in the slot, the area between the catcher's shoulder and the batter, to allow the umpire to see down and through the entire strike zone. With the head and eyes in the slot, positioning of the feet is the next thing to consider to properly position for balls and strikes. When setting the feet, umpires will want to maintain a heel-toe relationship, and as the diagram illustrates, the umpire's toes of his slot foot where the foot closest to the batter, should be no closer to the catcher than the catcher's heel. This will provide freedom of movement and optimal position for both the catcher and the umpire. Additionally, the umpire's drop foot, where the foot closest to the catcher, should be in line with the heel or instep of the umpire's slot foot. Some umpires find it more comfortable to angle the drop foot by pointing it directly to first base on a right-handed hitter or third base for a left-handed hitter. This will also help maximize the umpire's view of the strike zone, but also provide freedom of movement for the catcher. The feet should be a little wider than shoulder width apart, but not so wide so as to restrict the mobility of the umpire. This heel-toe relationship with the catcher and the heel-toe relationship with the slot foot and drop foot not only provides freedom of movement for the catcher, but also positions the umpire effectively to see the entire strike zone. From the top and side views, you'll notice that although the umpire's feet may be angled, the shoulders should be square to the pitcher. Likewise, the shoulders should be even, so as not to dip one shoulder lower than the other, which could impact vision and perception of the outside edge of the strike zone. From the side view, also notice the slight lean forward from the torso while the umpire remains square to the pitcher. The umpire should sit with his butt down and then lean slightly forward into a balanced athletic position, keeping his chest over the knees. Notice these umpires are positioned in the slot, heel-toe relationship with the catcher's feet and the slot foot and drop foot is properly aligned, shoulders are square, and the torso lean is forward to keep each umpire in an athletic, mobile, yet balanced stance. Additionally, these umpires illustrate another fundamental, proper head height in which the umpire's chin is positioned just above the top of the catcher's helmet. With an understanding of stance basics, let's talk about how to step into position and into your stance properly. 
first, it is encouraged that umpires step in with the slot foot first because this will help umpires position more aggressively in the slot to maximize vision of the entire strike zone. Notice that again in this clip, this umpire has stepped in with his slot foot first to position effectively in the slot. As we slow this next clip down, it is easier to see how effectively this umpire steps in with the slot foot first to properly position in the slot. The next thing to cover is when to time sinking down into your stance to find your set position. Once the pitcher toes the rubber, we should step in with the slot foot first. Then, when the pitcher lifts the non-pivot foot or the free foot to deliver the pitch, and as her momentum shifts forward, the umpire will sink into the set position. In this example, notice that the umpire is set at the proper time, and as the pitcher rocks into her motion, once she lifts the free foot, the umpire has sunk down into his stance and is not going to move his head or body as the pitch is in flight. The umpire in this next clip provides us with another great example. Notice that as the pitcher lifts the free foot to deliver, the umpire sinks into the set position and is not sinking or drifting while the pitch is in flight. This is done because this umpire has found a lock-in mechanism and this enables him to keep his head and body still as the pitch is in flight. Once umpires have stepped into position and assume a proper stance, there are four fundamentals to remember while the pitch is in flight. Proper head height, stable head and body, tracking with the eyes, and proper timing, which is a function of the proper use of eyes. Let's take a look at a few examples. In this first clip, notice the umpire's proper head height in which the umpire's chin is positioned at the top of the catcher's helmet to allow him to see the entire strike zone. The second clip illustrates that the stance should afford stability for both the head and the body. This umpire uses a great lock-in mechanism to help avoid drifting or sinking while the pitch is in flight. Tracking is the third fundamental requiring umpires to track the ball with their eyes from the pitcher's hand to the catcher's mitt. The last thing to keep in mind is that proper timing requires umpires to allow the ball to hit the catcher's mitt before moving or vocalizing a call. Note that good timing is a product of proper use of eyes to track the ball accordingly. With an understanding of these pre-pitch and in-pitch fundamentals, physically calling pitches is the next topic to discuss regarding plate mechanics. First, remember that good timing is achieved by the proper use of eyes. Second, the voice should be controlled so as to project decisiveness to the players, coaches, and nearby fans. A voice that is too quiet conveys uncertainty or confusion. However, a bellowing or otherwise over-elaborate voice can be considered excessive and is not an acceptable technique. All voice calls should be clearly audible. In the third fundamental of calling pitches, remember that Little League encourages individualism in style and form of the basic signals. All signals are to be visible, crisp, and clear, and should not be sloppy or slow to the point of conveying carelessness, uncertainty, or confusion for any of the teams and fans. A final thing to remember is that it is mandatory that umpires make a signal on all calls with the exception of ball. Let's take a look at a few examples of umpires demonstrating these fundamentals and expectations. So lead off man aboard, Jong Hyun Park, the shortstop. Strike one. Paige Martin, Nathan Garrison, Shane Young, Michael Bubala. Here we go. Strike one. Sydney Salyers now steps in. And they feel very comfortable having him out there. As Park squares to butt, pulls it back, swings and misses. Now Paulie waves at one eye. Played umpire, Rex Fogel at first, Chris Ekstrom at second, John Budnick at third. Oh. Right, he moved, knew he had time, and threw a strike down to first. Oh. And played a pretty competitive game the rest of the way. Two strikeouts for Ben Clark in the Illinois first. And play well. Here's Gavin Duran, 0 for 3 in the opening loss. I think it's going to be really nice. 
And right now the temperature. She will start off with Riley Lane. These two teams have not met in the World Series until this moment. Illinois was down 4 nothing. the very first inning against Michigan before it got settled. Actually more like the low 70s at 71. Drop third, throw to first base. In time, two out. Two strikes to Salyers. And Kaya Hannon is going to get her. Strike three, Park is gone. Part of the play to get a first strike out of the game. Jung Hyung Park looking, you could see the different spin on that fastball. Had a good late tail to it. The final 2018 Central Region Video Mechanics Scram will review proper mechanics for an uncaught third strike situation when a batter attempts to check a swing. The purpose of this mechanic is to ensure neither the offense or the defense is at an advantage due to a batter attempting to check a swing on an uncaught third strike. This first example illustrates why. With an 0-2 count, the batter attempts to check his swing on a breaking ball that ends up bouncing towards the backstop. Because there is no immediate indication by the umpire in this example, it is very unclear how the defense or the offense should proceed. Clearly, the umpire's actions indicate the batter checked his swing and there is no need for the batter to run to first base. In fact, the plate umpire never checks the swing in this example. However, the crew allows the play to develop, putting both the defense and the offense in awkward positions. To avoid this situation, anytime a batter attempts to check his or her swing on an uncaught third strike, the umpire shall immediately check the swing regardless of request. Doing so ensures that neither the offense or the defense will have an advantage in this type of situation. Therefore, umpires must always and immediately check the swing on any uncaught third strike situation to mitigate confusion and avoid either team from gaining an advantage. The uncaught third strike mechanic is used by the plate umpire when the batter becomes a runner due to the third strike not being caught with first base unoccupied or two outs. There are four possibilities that can occur with an uncaught third strike. Obvious, no catch, no tag, and tag. This video will cover the obvious possibility. On a pitch that is strike three and is determined to have not been caught, the signal used to indicate the third strike is by pointing with the right hand and arm out to the side using no voice. Using this signal mitigates any confusion that could occur from players misconstruing the standard strike mechanic as being an out call. If the ball gets away from the catcher and it is obvious to everyone that the pitch was not caught, no additional action is needed. Let's put it all together and watch the entire mechanic in real time. No catch! The uncaught third strike mechanic is used by the plate umpire when the batter becomes a runner due to the third strike not being caught with first base unoccupied or two outs. There are four possibilities that can occur with an uncaught third strike. Obvious, no catch, no tag, and tag. This video will cover the no catch possibility. On a pitch that is strike three and it is determined to have not been caught, the signal used to indicate the third strike is by pointing with the right hand and arm out to the side using no voice. Using this signal mitigates any confusion that could occur from players misconstruing the standard strike mechanic as being an out call. If the pitch is short hopped by the catcher and the batter runner attempts to advance with no tag attempt, use the safe mechanic and verbalize no catch. Let's put it all together and watch the entire mechanic in real time. No catch! No tag! The uncaught third strike mechanic is used by the plate umpire when the batter becomes a runner due to the third strike not being caught with first base unoccupied or two outs. There are four possibilities that can occur with an uncaught third strike. 
Obvious, no catch, no tag, and tag. This video will cover the no tag possibility. On a pitch that is strike three and it is determined to have not been caught, the signal used to indicate the third strike is by pointing with the right hand and arm out to the side using no voice. Using this signal mitigates any confusion that could occur from players misconstruing the standard strike mechanic as being an out call. If the batter runner attempts to advance and a tag attempt misses, use the safe mechanic and verbalize no tag. Let's put it all together and watch the entire mechanic in real time. No tag! He's out! The uncaught third strike mechanic is used by the plate umpire when the batter becomes a runner due to the third strike not being caught with first base unoccupied or two outs. There are four possibilities that can occur with an uncaught third strike. Obvious, no catch, no tag, and tag. This video will cover the tag possibility. On a pitch that is strike three and it is determined to have not been caught, the signal used to indicate the third strike is by pointing with the right hand and arm out to the side using no voice. Using this signal mitigates any confusion that could occur from players misconstruing the standard strike mechanic as being an out call. If the batter runner is tagged immediately, use the out mechanic. Let's put it all together and watch the entire mechanic in real time. He's out! As the plate umpire, mobility is an expectation. The first mechanic to discuss with regard to the expected movement from behind the plate is the tangle-untangle mechanic. This mechanic seeks to open the gate in order to afford freedom of movement for the catcher on pop flies and any other ball to the backstop. To do this, umpires must focus on the shoulders of the catcher. That is, if the catcher moves his left shoulder to chase a ball to the backstop, the umpire will open the gate as depicted here by lifting the left leg and pivoting on the right foot. The umpire will use crossover steps to follow the catcher back to the screen to fulfill catch-no-catch no catch responsibilities. Let's review this clip again. Once the ball is hit, the catcher immediately opens his left shoulder to chase the ball. The umpire observes this and reacts accordingly by opening his left leg and pivoting on his right foot to afford a clear path for the catcher to chase the ball. Using crossover steps, the umpire positions effectively to observe catch-no-catch. On wild pitches, especially with the potential steal play at the plate, notice that the mechanic is the same. As the catcher immediately opens his left shoulder to chase the wild pitch, the umpire opens the gate by lifting his left leg and then pivoting on his right foot. This provides the catcher with a clear path to pursue the baseball and an open throwing lane to attempt to put out the runner. Remember that the purpose of this mechanic is to afford freedom of movement for the catcher to make a play. Unfortunately, in this clip, the umpire does not execute the mechanic properly. Note that rather than reading the catcher's shoulder, the umpire immediately looks up to find the ball, and in doing so, he denies the catcher a clear path to make a play. It is important to remember to read and cue off the catcher by opening the gate effectively, providing a clear path for the catcher to make a play. The fielder will always take us to the ball and to position effectively. Umpires must read the fielder rather than the ball when executing the open the gate mechanic. On any batted ball, the primary responsibility of the plate umpire is fair and foul. To do so, plate umpires must hold the line to position accordingly for any fair foul decision the play may dictate. On this pop fly with converging fielders, note that the umpire starts near the line but then drifts off the line. The goal in this mechanic is to keep our belt buckle on the line throughout the entire duration of the play, and on this pop fly, the umpire should hold the line by positioning up the line with belt buckle on it, and his priorities in this play are first, fair foul, second, catch no catch, and third, potential interference or obstruction on the batter runner. In making any of those calls, it is difficult for the umpire to sell the call if he does not hold the line and although the catcher may have taken a position away from the umpire on the line, plate umpires should work to position with belt buckle on the line and hold that position for the entire development of the play. This video mechanics gram will focus on an umpiring fundamental, removing your mask and clearing the catcher, trailing the batter runner up to first base. 
plate umpire in this clip does an excellent job of illustrating these fundamentals. First, he removes the mask with his left hand and then clears the catcher through the right-hander's batter's box. As the play develops, our plate umpire moves up the line and points fair on this one, getting to the approximate distance of halfway up the first base line. As this ball is put in play, our plate umpire does a great job of removing the mask with the left hand, and then as he clears the catcher through the right-hander's batter's box, he avoids interfering with the catcher as the catcher moves up the line. The umpire sets himself, makes the call, and gets great distance up the line to watch this play develop. Remember, we would like our plate umpires to clear through the right-hander's batter's box to avoid any contact with the catcher. Additionally, this umpire must trail the batter runner to assume responsibility for his priorities. Number one, fair foul decision. Secondly, any interference or obstruction committed by or on the batter runner, as well as ruling on any overthrow that may potentially go out of play. Holly Rudolph, Dominic Koistra, Cameron King, Gage Martin, Nathan Gerritsen, Shane Young, Michael Bubala. Here we go. Strike one, plate umpire, Rex Fogel at first, Chris Ekstrom at second, John Budnick at third. It looks in pretty some severe thunderstorms that came here and rocked this place last night, but the grounds crew was out. Did some work, we're a little bit seeped underneath around second base. Illinois manager Matt Bubala has made some offensive changes, starting with Zaja at the top spot. That's Brandon Eckleberry with a nice play to Rob Osborne. Play well. Here's Gavin Duran, 0 for 3 in the opening loss. Just had to capitalize. Holly Rudolph, the pitcher, and then Dominic. Cooler conditions today by about 15 degrees. We have gone from the low 90s. I think it's going to be really nice. And right now the temperature actually more like the low 70s at 71. Drop third, throw to first base. In time, two outs. He moved, knew he had time, and threw a strike down to first. Now Paulie waves at one out of the zone, one and two. According to the coaches, handles pressure very well. well. He should be good today then because this is a pressure situation. It's win or go home. And Illinois was down 4 nothing in the very first inning against Michigan before it got settled and played a pretty competitive game the rest of the way. Two strikeouts for Ben Clark in the Illinois first. She will start off. This 18 World Series. Jay Huck Lee will start. Squares to Butt, lays down a good one. Kaya will fire to first and he'll throw it a little wide. And the base runner will now go back to first and he'll stay there. The pressure on the base pass, and this house starts off. Great butt right here by Lee. And a nice play there by Kaya, but just throw. So lead off man aboard. Jong Hyun Park, the shortstop. Strike one. And they feel very comfortable having him out there. As Park squares to butt, pulls it back, swings and misses. Park choking way up, pulls it foul, but he hammered it. Wow, that's a nice stroke. A fake butt here just to keep it short. You see how much he's choked up there. 
Breaking ball coming in right into the barrel. Yeah. Just can't quite keep that fair. Look that's, how close he is. Yeah, that's a great shot at its spin, too, because it spins taking it right back in. And... Strike three. Park is gone. Part of the play to get the first strike out of the game. Jung Hyung Park looking. You can see the different spin on that fastball. Had a good late tail to it. Bruce 